Well, they used to be just for celebrities, but now more and more Aussie couples are using prenuptial agreements to protect their assets if things go wrong in the relationship. Prenups set out what will happen if the marriage or relationship goes off track, but can it kill the romance? We hit the streets to get your thoughts. I'm a lawyer and I'm married to a lawyer and I wouldn't sign a prenup. Um, you're going to marriage loving someone and believing someone and having trust in someone, so a prenup makes it a commercial transaction. Well, I'm getting married in five weeks and I don't have a prenup, so I think it kills the romance, definitely. So. I'm for prenups, <laughs> but I, think, I believe in foresight. I mean, who knows? You never know what's going to happen. If my partner wanted a prenup, of course I'd sign it. She should get more than 50%. So uh, right regarding the prenup, doesn't matter how much money I would have, the wife and the child is the most important part of the relationship. Money for me doesn't really matter at all, so I'd probably be pretty disappointed if someone were to ask me to sign one of those. Yeah. So, does a prenup ruin the moment or is it just sensible forward planning? Let's ask money expert Anthony Bell, who joins mm. us from Aruchidor. Family lawyer Fiona Reid is here with us in the studio, along with psychologist Joe Lamble. Good morning to you all. I'm assuming three very different points of view on this one. So we'll start with you, Fiona. What exactly is a prenup? Prenups really weren't very worthwhile until the concept of binding financial agreements were introduced into family law legislation in 2000. Um, essentially what it provides is, provided it's drafted properly and it, it satisfies legal criteria, it's a framework for deciding how your assets are going to be divided in the event your marriage breaks down. Uh, who's likely to opt for an arrangement like this and what's involved? Anybody can mm. um, opt for that arrangement. In my experience, generally, uh, people who are most likely to enter into a prenup are, are people where one of the people entering the marriage has more assets than the other. Mm. Um, and often mm. in a second marriage, particularly if someone's been through a family court process once, they don't want to go through that again. Mm. So they'll enter into a prenup to protect those assets, not only for their own benefit, but also for the benefit of their children. OK, Jo, a couple of viewers in the earlier clip said they thought it showed a lack of commitment that would kill the romance. What, from a psychologist's point of view? Yeah, I think it would kill the romance. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's very sad. You'd be all getting ready to move in together or to get married and then here, sign this. And I think it sometimes does show a lack of trust in the relationship, not the other person, <laughs> or maybe some fear of commitment because you've already got that exit clause ready. So yeah, I think it's a bit tricky. Uh, Joe, what's the best way to approach the discussion with your partner? I I'm tipping it's not during a fight. <laughs> no, definitely not. If you want them to sign it, definitely yeah, yeah, not. Yeah. And definitely not the night before. Don't hijack them the night before the wedding. Just one last thing for you to sign this. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, so yeah. start it as early as possible. Make sure the reasons are really clear that, you know, we've got a blended family here or as Fee said, it's a, a second marriage and so we're just trying to protect the children in the future. Be prepared for insecurity. Your partner might be really shocked at this suggestion. See separate lawyers, but maybe sit down together and discuss what you might say to your lawyers before yeah. you go and talk through any fears of a lack of trust or commitment. If some somebody is presenting you with this idea, you might need to say, hey, listen, are you committed to this? Are you just thinking, oh, I don't know if this is going to work out, so I've got this safety net all in place, or are you really committed? But does it necessarily show a lack of commitment, or, uh, you know, no, does, that's, no, it doesn't no, necessarily not at all. No, that, does it? No, it doesn't. That's why you need to make it clear what your reason is yeah. for requesting this. And if you are, then that's good. All right, let's move on to Anthony now. Mate, is it uh, just the rich and famous who need this kind of protection? <laughs> Well, it used to be, Larry, but now it's become, uh, you know, the high rate of divorce. It's actually become a, a talking point and, uh, and one that, uh, you know, even, even people starting out in their early 20s, I mean, are interested in that, particularly, as was mentioned before, when there is one party who has uh, a large amount of assets than the other in the marriage. OK, are there any tax advantages to sorting out the numbers before tying the knot? <laughs> Yeah, and if, you, if you're being uh, led into a, a prenup or a binding financial agreement on the basis of tax savings, it's not actually correct. So uh, you can blow that one off immediately. But the, um, the real things that the, the agreement is, is trying to you know, protect, is, uh, probably starting with the family home. Um, there's also to uh, an element where uh, the investments have got to be handled and also to even inheritances in the future. There's always a, a big question comes from wealthy parents that are worried that uh, someone coming into their family may have uh, untoward um, wants or needs um, out of that marriage. So those sorts of things can be looked at as well in the agreement. All right, Fiona, what do you need to consider when pr planning a prenup? Both parties have to get independent legal advice and so your lawyer will go through a number of things that you need to consider. But you need to look at the property that you have and how you intend to deal with that if your marriage breaks down. You need to look at the property you acquire or, or think about the property you acquire jointly through the, throughout the marriage and how you might divide that up. 
talk, think about changes that might occur in relation to your financial circumstances. Perhaps by the time your marriage ends, one party might be earning three times what the other is, or one party might be unemployed, how you might deal with that. Health factors that might be relevant, and of course future parenting arrangements, mm. particularly if one of the parents is intending to be a stay-at-home mum. Obviously any agreement is going to have to account for the, for the extra assets she might need. Okay, Joe, could this sort of arrangement be considered similar to making a will, taking out life insurance? Could you approach it just in that manner? Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Well, because death is inevitable. So, I mean, if you take out life insurance and will, you're protecting your partner, and that's, a, that's mm. essential. But this is more about protecting yourself and your children, so it is more complicated. And I can see what Fee and Anthony are saying, mm. that it's, yeah, probably sensible. But, yeah, I think you really do need to take into account what effect it might have on the relationship and talk it through. All right, ladies, thank you very much. Um, much. Anthony, very quickly before we go, would you do a prenuptial agreement before you got married? <laughs> uh, mate, I probably wouldn't. Um, I, I reckon yeah. when you come into something like that, you bring everything with you. Um, but I'd, I'd probably sign one if I was asked to, if uh, the person I was marrying was wealthier than me or was important. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys, for asking that. I really appreciate like that. Right on the spot there. Well, that's what we do here on the morning program now, <laughs> investigative journalism. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate that. And just on a legal point, too, uh, if uh, Kylie's my uh, TV wife, if we have a fight and separate, do I get half her estate? Oh, absolutely. Terrific. You get, my, you. you get my half of the desk. That's about, that's about the only asset I have here at work. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thanks. And Thanks. the couch. You can have the whole couch to yourself. Great. A little and the remote. Th all right, and that's it. I'll stop now. Yeah. All right. Um, a little later on this morning, do people really tell the truth in online dating ads? Don't know. Plus, why one in four women buy shoes that just don't fit? Because they're on sale. Up next, though, if you're too busy to shop around for car insurance, here's Glenn with a solution for you.